Second the motion. I, I rise to support this motion moved by the member for McMahon. And I note that this is the second motion in the House today on Assyrian issues, following the motion moved earlier by the member for Barara. And I recognise in the gallery tonight Hamid Hassan and David David of the Assyrian National Alliance and their delegation. Acting Speaker, there are two parts to this motion. The first part, Clause 1A of this motion, states that this House notes that the Assyrian population of Iraq continues to suffer persecution ten years after the, the fall of Saddam Hussein. Now, Acting Speaker, Saddam Hussein was the most brutal of dictators. He led his people into senseless wars, the Iran-Iraq War, the invasion of Kuwait, wars that resulted in hundreds of thousands of deaths. He used chemical weapons on his own people. And I recall a question that was asked at the time of the Gulf War. Was Iraq the way it was because of Saddam? Or was Saddam the way he was because of Iraq? History now answers that question, and it seems there is truth in both. For Saddam and his Ba'athist regime did at least keep the genie of Islamic militancy bottled up for a time. For since the fall of Saddam Hussein, Assyrians in Iraq have been the targets of numerous fatal attacks by Islamic terrorist groups. Just a few examples. In August 2004, an attack by Islamists on Iraqi Christian churches killed 11 people. In 2006, an Orthodox priest, uh, Bulos Iskander, was snatched off the streets of Mosul by a group that demanded a ransom. Even though this ransom was still paid, he was beheaded. Worse still, when his body was found, the priest's arms and legs had also been cut off. In 2008, the Assyrian clergyman, Archbishop Paulus Faraj Roha of the Chaldean Catholic Church in Mosul died after being abducted. In January 2008, bombs exploded outside nine churches. This followed a group affiliated with Al-Qaeda, calling themselves the Islamic State of Iraq, stating that Iraq indigenous Christians were, quote, a legitimate target. And on the 31st of October 2010, militants of al-Qaeda in Iraq laid a bloody siege to Our Lady of Deliverance Church in Baghdad during a Sunday evening mass, killing 58 people, including two priests, and wounding 78 more. In the attack, as detailed in the New York Times on the 1st of November 2010, it noted, Blood smeared the walls of Our Lady of Salvation Church on Monday. Scraps of flesh remained between the pews. It was the worst massacre of Iraqi Christians since the war had begun in 2003. Survivors said that one of the priests was pushed to the ground as he grasped a crucifix. He pleaded with his gunmen to spare his worshippers. He was then killed, his body riddled with bullets. The motivation behind these attacks on Iraqi Christians is religious. It is aimed to drive the minority out of Iraq. What is happening today in Iraq is ethnic cleansing. Assyrians are being killed in a deliberate and strategic way. And Madam Speaker, this brings us to Clause 1B of the motion. It states that this House notes in 2003 there were nearly 1.4 million Christians in Iraq, but due to deaths and forced immigration, the figure has fallen to around 500,000. Speaker, the new Iraq from the time of its liberation from the Ba'athist regime has witnessed a huge exodus of Christians. And in the decades since the invasion of the coalition, more than half of Iraqis Christians have fled to refugee camps in Syria or to Jordan reducing a pre-war population that was more than a million to 500, maybe less, maybe only 400,000, mostly which survive today in Iraqi Kurdistan. Those remaining are experiencing one of the worst, most pressing humanitarian crises, with systematic persecution largely unreported in the mainstream media. So today, on their ancestral soil, all that is left as one of the world's oldest Christian nations is a small, desperate minority. A culture 
that has survived centuries of hardship now stands on the verge of disappearing completely. If nothing is done, the Christian community in Iraq, after over 2,000 years as a significant presence, may disappear altogether. Now, Speaker, the second clause of this motion sets up what the international community must do to ensure this never happens. The motion calls for the government of Iraq to establish an autonom autonomous province in the Nineveh Plains region and to provide a haven for Syrians and all other historical Christian people and for the continuation of their linguistic, cultural and religious traditions. In considering this motion, it is important to understand that Iraq is a land or nation artificially created out of the ruins of the old Ottoman Empire, composed of multiple ethnicities and religious sects. Iraq's modern borders were mostly demarcated in 1922, not by the Iraqi people, but by the League of Nations when the Ottoman Empire was divided. It placed Iraq under the authority of the United Kingdom as the British mandate of Mesopotamia. A monarchy was established in 1921 and the Kingdom of Iraq gained independence from Britain in 1932. In 1958, the monarchy was overthrown and the Republic of Iraq was created, where it had been controlled by the Ba'athist Party from 1968 until 2003, after an invasion by coalition forces when the Ba'athist Party was removed from power. The coalition presence in Iraq ended in 2011. Iraq has never known a functioning democracy. Its different groups were only held together by Saddam's use of political terror, and this worked to keep Iraq together until the invasion of 2013. So we cannot look at Iraq through rose-coloured Western glasses, assuming that multiculturalism will just work out fine. Just look at the overall chaos in Iraq today. More than 1,000 people were killed in violence in Iraq in May this year, making it the deadliest month since the Tectarian slaughter of 2006-07 and the United Nations reported on Saturday that there is a fear raised of a return to civil war. Today, we have read reports of five men being arrested in Iraq after three laboratories designed to produce sarin and mustard gas were uncovered. Also recovered were model helicopters flown by remote control, which were designed to distribute the chemical agents. It seems clear that the terror plot of Al Qaeda planned to strike targets not only in, within Iraq but also in Europe the US using chemical weapons and model aircraft. Amongst this chaos, the new authorities in Baghdad are simply unable to protect their Christian minority. So the only way forward is what is known as the Nineveh Plain Solution, the establishment of an autonomous province in the Nineveh Plains region at the centre of the ancestral Assyrian homeland to provide a safe haven for Syrian and all other historical Christian people. In those plains where the Bible places the Garden of Eden, there already exists a compact Christian population. For the Assyrian Christian, including the Chaldean Syriac community, the only effective solution is for the Assyrian people to remain in Iraq in the creation of a new province in the Nineveh Plains, the heart of the ancestral Assyrian homeland. Local control would allow these indigenous people to gain a stable foothold within their country, from which they could sustain, develop and grow a base population in a secure and stable environment. Christian autonomy in the region would also protect the Syrian communities and also work as a buffer zone between warring sides. This solution is also consistent with the United Nations Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. Speaker, we now have a non-permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council, one that came at great expense to the Australian taxpayer, and we only hold that for two short years. This should not just be a trophy that sits on our mantel place, gathering dust. We must use our voice to promote freedom, democracy, human rights and religious liberty, and to raise the significant human rights concerns of the Christian Assyrians with the Iraqi government. There is no other alternative other than to see the ongoing Christian Assyrian genocide, the second of this century. We have a moral obligation to see that this cultural extinction will not happen.
The question is that the motion be agreed to. The member for Fowler. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I'd like to thank the member for McMahon bringing this important motion to the House tonight. Could I also acknowledge uh, his great con contribution as, uh, as in his ministerial portfolio in increasing the Australia's refugee intake to 20,000, but specifically in identifying additional 1,000 positions to be uh, focused on refugees from the Middle East with this particular situation in mind. So, Minister, uh, well, so, <laughs> Chris, thank you for what you've done, for what you've done for the community. Um, his electorate in McMahon, like my electorate in Fowler, uh, has a very high proportion of uh, refugees from the Middle East and particularly from Iraq. These re refugees represent a small proportion, however, of the million uh, Christians who fled Iraq uh, since the invasion of 2003. As much of the, uh, the larger population of individuals who are lucky enough to escape death now find themselves in refugee camps in Syria, Jordan, Turkey, Egypt and Lebanon, uh, they are certainly lacking um, the basic of human rights and certainly living conditions. Many others escape to uh, other regions of northern Iraq where their future is still uncertain but is somewhat safer from harassment and persecution. Now, I join with the uh, member from McMahon in call, uh, calling uh, for the government of Iraq to establish an autonomous province in the Nivada plains of northern Iraq, uh, where Assyrians and other uh, Christian minorities uh, have, uh, can live in peace, uh, free of threat uh, to their lives, their livelihood, their culture and, most importantly, their religion. The Nivada plains are, uh, holds a high level of importance for the Assyrian uh, people. Uh, certainly those of the uh, Syrian Church of the East, uh, the Syriacs um, and Kedalians. Um, it is a location which is very much at the heartland of the uh, uh, of Assyrian ancestry and uh, many uh, and you'll find many of the Assyrian uh, ruins in that vicinity. It's also a province where the majority of the population is drawn from a group of minorities, around half of them being Assyrians. Unfortunately the Life is difficult for the citizens in that region, particularly the lack of infrastructure uh, uh, to aid the displaced population. There is certainly a grave lack of uh, funding going into uh, health, education, roads and other things to make this a viable, uh, um, a viable region, um, ensuring the survival and prosperity of the population there. There's also a growing struggle um, for political influence in the area between uh, um, the various Assyrian entities, including the Assyrian Dem Democratic Movement and sections of the Kurdish uh, uh, regional government. But uh, the situation for Christians uh, face in Iraq, including northern Iraq, the various refugee camps in neighbouring countries, is very alarming uh, to all, res uh, quite frankly, responsible members of the international community. The internally displaced people and refugees, nevertheless, are fortunate. Uh, to have at least a dedicated rep a group of representatives around the world who are advocating on their behalf and making sure that the global community is well aware of their struggle. We have with us uh, tonight um, uh, representatives from the Assyrian Universal Alliance, an organisation which has a very strong presence in my, my local uh, community and across Australia and indeed New Zealand. I've met with on a number of times uh, their representative, uh, Hermes Shohan, the organisation's regional secretary, David David, uh, uh, and other representatives of the community uh, here tonight, and Ninos Aaron, James Jacob, Joseph Joseph, Redmond uh, uh, Zuma, and Shahina Zuma. I'd, I'd like to, um, I'd be very much like to actually thank the, uh, uh, the Syrian Universal Alliance uh, uh, for the work that they do. As a matter of fact, only recently, Madam Speaker, I had the opportunity to prevent, uh, present them uh, with a community service award on behalf of the work that they do for the local Assyrian community, not only in terms of uh, looking after their wellbeing but also their settlement needs. Another individual who has uh, certainly provided me with a significant insight into the issues facing the Assyrian population in Iraq is his Beatitude Ma Malas Zara. Uh, the Metropolitan uh, uh, the Arts of, for the Archdiocese of Australia, New Zealand and Lebanon. He has been a, a, a leader of the Assyrian Church of the East in the Oceanic region for the last 25 years. And during our discussions, we share a common view on the importance of education among the displaced people, particularly those 
uh, in the northern, prov northern areas of Iraq, uh, and, the young, and particularly the for the younger generations. Expired. The question is that the motion be agreed to the member for Cook. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I rise to speak in support of the motion and put by the member for McMahon and commend the member uh, for bringing the motion to this House. I note that a motion very similar in intent to this motion was the, uh, brought before the Federation, Tabor, uh, Federation Chamber today by the uh, member for Brower, the father of the House, and uh, that was an equally worthy measure that should be uh, considered by this place. It is important that we signal our solidarity to those who are forced to endure great suffering on account of their race and religion. It is important that we extend our support to those who have been able to escape to build a new life here in Australia by proper methods. Uh, but are never quite free from the horror as they pray daily for friends and family left behind. It is even more important we make known to their oppressors that Australia will not sit silently and tolerate uh, the abuse of their fundamental human rights. On the 31st of October 2010, 58 lives were taken in an attack on a Baghdad cathedral. This act of violence extremism was sadly not the first or last against the Christian Assyrian people. On the 6th of January 2008, Epiphany Day, five Assyrian churches, one Armenian church and monasteries in Baghdad and Mosul were attacked with coordinated car bombs. In 2011, there were eight attacks on churches with more than 35 people wounded, both civilians and security forces. Christian Assyrians continue to suffer severe and barbaric persecution in Iraq and also in Syria. They are actively discriminated against. Their land has been illegally occupied. Kidnapping for ransom is often uh, an occurrence and harassment is commonplace. Uh, since 2003, 600,000 Christian Assyrians have fled their homes in Iraq. Thousands have come here to Australia and to Sydney to start a new life, but I know their brothers and sisters who remain behind are foremost in their thoughts. There are an estimated 3 million Assyrians around the world, 1 million of them living in Iraq and 700,000 in Syria. Under Saddam Hussein, they faced great discrimination, but though that regime of terror has come to an end, ten years on, their plight still has not. In Iraq, minorities still do not have adequate protection from the state, and we call on the Iraqi government to change that. And this morning, the member for Barawa also said we need to be generous, as we have been in the past in assisting those refugees who are forced to flee, and he is absolutely right. And that is what our humanitarian and refugee program is for. Australia does run, even before the change in the level of intake, the most generous resettlement per capita program for our refugee and humanitarian program for resettlement in the world. And we should never forget that these places are extremely precious. They mean the difference between life and death for those who are genuinely seeking the protection of those programs. In any one year, less than 1% of the world's 10 million refugees will be resettled. In any one year, 9.9 .9 million people will miss out. These places are precious. That is why it is crucial that we decide who comes to this country and the circumstances under which they come. That is why it is crucial that Australia runs our immigration program and not people smugglers who gamble with their lives and sell hope to the highest bidder. Madam Deputy Speaker, the commitment of the former Minister for Immigration, who brings this motion as the member, put in place a program that would ensure a thousand places under the program uh, for Assyrians in this situation. And those Assyrians go across uh, a range of nationalities. Um, they are Armenians, they are in other places. And that was a worthy measure, and it's one that the coalition has supported. And I would hope, if the coalition is elected into government, that is one that we could continue for some time, uh, supporting uh, Assyrians uh, who are placed in this situation. And we're in a situation to work with the local Assyrian community here in Australia to be able to better identify those who we are able to help. But it, within that population, obviously, includes the Armenians as well, who find themselves in this conflict. And just the weekend before last, I found myself in Lebanon and uh, was in the situation to observe at a little closer quarters the conflict that is occurring in Syria. And this is a very real situation um, that has no obvious conclusion um, other than us all to assume that there will be hardship and there will be a great brutality and there will be significant humanitarian consequences. 
and uh, a coalition government, if we're elected, uh, would stand ready to assist uh, with supporting the families of Assyrians here in Australia with being able to ensure that the refugee and humanitarian program was available to those who came through the appropriate method. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Call the member for McEwen. McMahon. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. I rise to support this motion brought forward by the member for McMahon because it is a very important uh, motion. Because uh, I'd like to draw the attention to the plight of Assyrian people in Syria who have been caught up in the civil war. Syrian Assyrians have been very aware of the persecution of Christians in Iraq following the removal of, of uh, Saddam over the past 10 years. Many of the Assyrians in Syria actually fled Iraq over the last 10 years and sought haven in Syria and now being forced to flee Syria as well. The Assyrian communities in Syria have had complex relationship with the Assad regime and was the case with the Assyrians in Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Violence against Assyrians is escalating in the region uh, in northeastern Syria, which is home to tens of thousands of Christians and many from my community. With government forces, Arab rebels on the Free Syrian Army and Kurdish fighters locked in a three-way struggle for control, uh, the area's Christian population has found itself caught in the middle. The Assyrians have become a target for criminals and terrorists. They are fleeing en masse. About half a million Assyrians have already escaped Syria. As well, the region has succumbed to lawlessness. Christians have become the target of armed rebel gangs which are kidnapping people and holding them to ransom. All sides are perpetrating terrible injustice on the local population, and this is adding to the mass exodus. The Assyrian community of my electorate desperately wants to help their relatives in Syria, but they feel helpless. They have been trying their best to support their families in Syria by collecting money every month to send to help provide food, shelter and support. But this has now become impossible due to Western Union closing its branches, leaving many of my constituents no way to transfer funds to support their families. The community still collects money and banks it here in the hope that they will soon find another way to transfer this much needed support. In recent months, the priests from uh, Tal Hamas, a town many of my constituents come from, were shot dead in front of the community. The rebels went on to occupy the town, taking over the school, council buildings and many other amenities which they are still occupying today. This has led to more than 300 families fleeing to parts of Turkey, to Lebanon and to Iraq. Other, uh, another village near uh, Haskar, I think is the pronunciation, forgive me if I haven't pronounced it right, my apologies, uh, was recently bombed by regime forces on the grounds that rebels were believed to be hiding there. The local church and several homes were destroyed and one student was killed. Trying to reach a refugee camp over the border, it gives no safety, no guarantee of safety and many Assyrians are now bypassing refugee camps on the border and having to head to monasteries and towns further inland. They are too afraid to stay in the refugee camps. The situation in Syria has gone from bad to worse, and it will seem that it will only get worse before it gets better. It has been two years already, and more than 70,000 people have lost their lives. We all hope the Syrian crisis will be resolved very soon and peacefully. And I'd like to thank the member for McMahon for his work and compassion as Immigration Minister and as member for McMahon. He's developed responses and allocated an extra thousand places in the refugee program to people affected by the Syrian crisis to be resettled in Australia. This included Syrian nationals and members of the Iraqi community, many who have family links to Australia. And Deputy Speaker, when I sit in the lounge room of uh, local Assyrians in my community and you hear their stories, it's a plight that, as humans, we, we have to take very seriously. We have to see what's going on and understand the, the issues that they face locally. And as you know, anyone with a family would know, that you always worry about your relatives when they're in harm's way. Uh, and many Assyrians are not having the opportunity to talk to their, their families and their, their, their loved ones overseas because of the issues of getting through. And I think the member for McMahon should be congratulated for bringing this motion to the House, and it's an important one, and that we hope that uh, 
that Assyrians are able to to be able to continue to have a or be able to have a better life that is free from persecution and give them the opportunities that they so deserve. The question is that the motion be agreed to. I call the member for Cowan. Uh, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And uh, I'd also like to uh, thank the member for McMahon for uh, bringing this motion forward. But what I would say, Madam Deputy Speaker, is that uh, if I do have any Assyrians in my electorate, I'm not aware of it. Uh, but in all these cases where there are Christians in the world that are being persecuted, and that takes place across the whole world, in many places, in many nations, uh, I would like to take the opportunity to speak about it. It is a sad reality that uh, in places around the world, uh, in uh, uh, Iraq, uh, in Syria particularly, Egypt, uh, it is the, the usual way that groups such as Christians are targeted uh, by uh, Islamist, Islamist uh, extremists. And that is the case most definitely in Iraq. Uh, when you look back upon what happened under the Ba'athist regime of Saddam Hussein, um, things were bad then, but things have only gotten worse uh, since then. Uh, we like to look upon these days. We like to look upon this great term of the Arab Spring as being somehow uh, a, a greater future a pluralist, a secular future uh, where democracy reigns supreme. And yet, in many ways, it seems like Iraq is the example that, we, that should have indicated to us uh, for the future that it was not actually the case at all, uh, that uh, what replaces these autocratic regimes in the Middle East is so often uh, extremist uh, in its uh, views and always in the background is this Islamicist uh, view uh, the Wahhabism, the Salafism, uh, that harkens back to uh, what some may call, or some in that, uh, in the Islamicist uh, view, might call the golden age of Islam, but in any case, always relates to the persecution and finding a fault and blame in minorities, and that is definitely the case in, in Iraq, and it is definitely the case in Syria, because as uh, other members have alluded to, so often uh, what has happened. Uh, those that have uh, gone from uh, Iraq and fled Iraq, the persecution of Christians in Iraq, gone across the border into Syria, only to find themselves now trapped between uh, the, um, the Alawite uh, regime of uh, President Assad uh, and uh, the increasingly uh, Islamist uh, opposition. Uh, both the Islamists blaming uh, the Christians for being on the uh, government side. Uh, the government blaming the Christians for not being sufficiently supportive, and all the while that the Christians having to make the decision, what are we going to do now? Having fled from Iraq, many having fled from Iraq over into Syria, and now having to flee again. And at the heart of it, as always, the persecution of Christians. And so uh, shortly I will uh, also take the opportunity of uh, uh, tabling a petition from the Barnabas Fund uh, which highlights the uh, cause of uh, per Christians persecuted in the world, uh, and I thank them for that. But uh, when I saw that uh, this motion was coming up, I thought I would take this opportunity as well. Yeah, I also congratulate the member for McMahon and all members that uh, it have— being 9.30 p.m., I propose the question the House do now adjourn. I call the member for Ryan. Thank you, Madam